Curry and John Morant oh, go head to head gracious. with a huge win streak on the line. That and much more. NBA Today starts right now. Welcome to NBA Today. I'm Malika Andrews, joined by Richard Jefferson, Kendrick Perkins, J.J. Reddick, Zach Lowe, Bobby Marks, and Woj are all going to be stopping by throughout the show. But first, Richard, let's get to Giannis versus Lamelo from last night. Game of the Bucks, night. It was the game of the night, other than the national championship game. No, what? That's all right. football. Well, Giannis versus Lamelo visiting the Charlotte Hornets. Lamelo starts cooking cooking and look at, at the end of the day this combination of Terry Rozier and LaMelo Ball is starting to look more and more deadly he's doing it on every level he's getting everyone involved scoring points at a high level well and Melo tied a career high 16 points in the third quarter but then Giannis doing what he does all the way to the rack just being a grown man just being a grown man at the end of the day is we're talking about we already know that there's a superstar on that court and his name is Giannis Antetokounmpo absolutely going up Fouled, heads to the free throw line. So he had a whole lot of practice of the booze and the chance, taking a deep breath during the playoffs, but can't quite get it to fall. Wesley Matthews. Wesley Matthews has been huge for them. I'm telling you, I love their two guard lineup that they have brewing. But LaMelo, that's what he does a little floater high off. Oh, going against Wesley. Sorry, old fella. Dropping it down. What? Why are you looking? Look at my face because I call him an old fella. He is. Well, and it forced the Bucks to have to take a little bit of a timeout. So last position of the game, Giannis drives, kicks that to Pat Connaughton, oh, falls out of bounds, can't this. quite get that's, it. That's the old Bucks. That's the old Bucks. Let's not do that anymore. Pat rubbing his head. The Hornets they pull out a win, and so the natural question coming out of this now as we welcome in 2008 NBA champ Kendrick Perkins. Perk, how soon until you are ready? to call LaMelo Ball a superstar? Well, well, welcome to the party. I mean, I, I said this before he was drafted. I thought the Knicks should have drafted him. Drafted him. I thought he had superstar, superstar them written all over him. Here's the thing. He's already a superstar in his own right. And I understand that people want to say, well, he got to accomplish more. He got to get to the All-Star game. He has to win the MVP. All that, yeah, I get all that. But when you look at what LaMelo Ball does and what he – how he affects the game of basketball, that's one thing. But look at those stands. Look at those people in those seats. That's another thing. Ooh. And it wasn't because Giannis came into town. It's like that every single night in Charlotte. And so when you when I'm when I'm listening to these kids, because I'm in the AAU world now, and they talking about LaMelo Ball, those are the same kids that on school nights when LaMelo Ball comes into town on road games, they're saying, hey, daddy, mom, I promise you I'm going to get up and not be tired. Please take me to the game tonight. That is superstar. When you selling out arenas and you putting butts in the seats and kids are mimicking you, that is a true definition of being a superstar. He's already reaching it right now in front of our very own eyes. Now, so, again, Malika, you don't have to team me up on this one again. Oh, yeah, I, I, I was like, this. you were already oh, no, ready I, I to go. That. I was, you know, sometimes you're listening and sometimes you're waiting for someone to finish. <laughs> in this case, I was waiting for someone to finish. Thank you for finishing, Perk. At the end of the day, he is an absolute star. Superstar, there are very few. Understand, the game of, the, uh, of basketball, the NBA, when you have a superstar, you are transcendent on sports. You are Magic Johnson. You are Larry Bird. You are Michael Jordan. To say superstar, there's probably only about four or five superstars in this game. Now, is he headed that direction? Rookie of the year. Like, we've followed his story pretty much like LeBron James since he was 14, 15 years old. Yes, he is a star. He is going to be an all-star this year. If they keep going, he's on his way towards all NBA. But superstardom, superstardom is a little bit different. There's very few people that ever reach superstardom in this game. Well, well, let me ask you a question, Mr. Richard Jefferson. Please. Name me your young superstars in the NBA right now. you said young superstars. You said young superstars. No, 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 matter of fact, name me your superstars that are in the NBA right now. And and give me the criteria of being a superstar. Well, I... I want to jump in here Get for in there, one Malika. second. Get him, I, I do think that superstardom is a little bit subjective here, and there's a bit you have to. There's a concoction. There's a potion, right? There is the on-court ability to affect a game. Then you can factor in what you're saying: butts and seats, marketability, etc. And we have had this conversation so many times in our newsroom, in breaks, all this. I actually, I can't believe I'm saying this, Perk. I kind of agree with Richard. There are only about five superstars in the league that are 
just plain superstars. They are transcendent. They have earned it. There is nothing they can do to let it go. I think there are other players who have been superstars uh, in the past. I think there are players who could be superstars in the future. But the LeBrons, the Giannis's, that's the who Steph I'm looking Curry's. at. The Steph Curry's. <laughs> yes. Bonafide superstar. Yeah, and, and, no question. Until about. people that know, until people that no. don't know basketball at all know his name, no. that's when you become a superstar. Okay. Well, we do no. have right. Uh, we're ending up on him today. No, we should no, be nicer. no, no, no. No, 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 because listen, here's the thing that I got <laughs> over both of you guys, star. okay? I no, I am in AAU gyms every single weekend we heard. with over three to four, okay, with three to five hundred kids. And guess what? A name that comes up every single time somebody walks up to me is LaMelo Ball. So that's what I'm trying to t that's what I'm trying to explain to y'all, like... I understand where y'all coming from, but when I when I think of a household name, every kid in America loves LaMelo Ball. And right now, he's at the point where you could call him a superstar. Well, every kid knows and is talking about LaMelo Ball. Every person knows Kevin Durant. So let's get you caught up yes. on the Nets and the Blazers game from last night. So the Nets had Kyrie, which we could debate the superstar in there too, back for a second game after he debuted last Wednesday in Indiana, and he repeated repeated his production. He scored 22 points against the Blazers while playing nearly 40 minutes. And then KD, he had 28 points in 42 minutes. So he has now had 11 straight games scoring at least 25. That's the second longest such streak in Nets history behind his own 12 game streak from last season. But not all things are good for the Nets. They lost to the Blazers. That's without Damian Lillard, without CJ McCollum. And Brooklyn has now lost five of their last seven games. So here's KD on his minutes load after that game. Are you concerned at all about the workload that you put in so far today? No. Let me die out there. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not concerned. But whenever the coach uh, want to give me a day, then, you know, I'll support it. But I'm not looking for one. You get what I'm saying? So I'm going to just play until they – Tell me that I'm sitting up, you know, but that's not on my mind when I'm playing. That's not on my mind when I'm going into a game, preparing for a game. It is what it is. I got to play 40. I got to play, so what? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to play, but if they tell me to sit out, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, dang, I'm going to die out there. Well, with that, I'd like to welcome in J.J. Reddick. So, J.J., do you think the Nets are putting Kevin Durant right now? Well, I, I think they should definitely be concerned with his minutes. But as you guys just talked about, Kevin Durant is a superstar. He's yes, a max he player. There's inherently going to be pressure on him. That has been exasperated this season for a few reasons. First of all, COVID, injuries. But really, the Nets have an unbalanced roster. They have three superstars or whatever the criteria is, guys. <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. But they have three star players. And then after that, there's this pretty significant drop off. And, uh, you know, because of Kyrie being only, only being available for two games all season, he's had to shoulder more minutes. Um, but look, his usage rate is slightly above his career average. It's not like when he's on the court, he's doing more than he, he normally does. The, the Nets are in the middle of five games in seven days right now. There's not a break in sight. They don't have a two game break or two day break in between games until January 27th and 28th. And then they go back out west for another long road trip. So there's really no end in sight for this team until you get to the All-Star break. Well, and James Harden didn't play, so it already seems that they're staggering their stars. But with KD and Harden, like we just saw in that graphic, they rank in the top three in minutes per game along with Fred Van Vliet, who's number one. Is this sustainable for the entire season? This is the benefit of, of bringing Kyrie back for road games. Um, if I'm the Nets, my strategy would be if <laughs> – look, if, if – those three guys are healthy uh, for a road game. We're picking one of them to sit out the game and get some rest. Um, and certainly as you get past the All-Star break, you can be even more strategic and, and look for opportunities to play those guys together. Uh, but there is a concern for sure that Harden and Durant are playing too many minutes and having to shoulder so much of the playmaking burden, which is the benefit of bringing back Kyrie. And even if that's only for half the games, uh, it, it's, it's a huge lift for this team. Well, but there's kind of a push and pull there, right? Because you have to have enough games together to build chemistry, which was sure. something they struggled to get last season. But then at the same time, they want to make sure they're rested for when it counts. Kyrie, he did play last night. Kevin Durant did play. James Harden did not. Kyrie Irving, he was unhappy with the play blade.